Hi and welcome to this uh, demonstration. My name is still Bjorn and um, what I'm going to show you now, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to, to install the WSP Builder extensions for, for Visual Studio and, and um, uh, sort of walk you through some of the benefits of using that tool. Um, so uh, I've downloaded the latest uh, installation here, that's uh, version 1.05. You can get that from, from Coldplex anytime. And of course, I've installed uh, Visual Studio in advance here. I'm using Visual Studio 2008 here. So I'm just going to go through the spouse mode here and just click yes, 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 and uh, OK at the end here. So it's uh, it, it really doesn't take much time at all. Now, uh, the, the thing about the WSP Builder is that there are two versions uh, available on Coldplex. You have one version, which is just a command line uh, version of WSP Builder, and I mean, that's still a magnificent tool. Uh, but what I'm, I'm, I want to show you here are the Visual Studio extensions for, for WSP Builder, which is, I mean, the power and the, the time you save here is just tremendous. And then, of course, all of this is free. It's available on, on Coldplex. And then Kosten, the, the Danish guy who made all this, is, uh, is a real hero to the SharePoint community. So thank you, Kosten. Now, after installing here, um, what I want to do is I would just want to start up my Visual Studio here. And I'm using the, the validation and the um, trial version of, uh, of Visual Studio 2008. And once I now go to create a new project here, you'll see that I now have a tab called WSP Builder here. Uh, and inside here, you'll have uh, two project types. Then you basically select whether you want uh, the workflow option added or not. And if you want the workflow option added, you actually need to install also the, the workflow extensions or the workflow framework for, for uh, Visual Studio. So we just create a default uh, project here and we'll hit OK and then we'll uh, see basically what the WSP Builder will, will do for us. Uh, and as I said, this, this tool will really make you, it will save you tons and tons of time. Okay, we'll just uh, say, well, I don't want to participate in anything like this. By the way, the, the first SharePoint solution here is uh, part of the exercises for, for the understanding SharePoint issue. Uh, number five called beginning SharePoint development. So now that our uh, WSP Builder project has been created, uh, you'll notice a couple of things here. Uh, the first thing is that you have a folder in your project called 12, and that folder will map to the, the, um, uh, the 12 hive of your SharePoint installation. So, so anything you put inside this folder will be added to the solution and deployed as part of, of the solution when you, when you install the solution later. Uh, you'll also see that you have a signing key added for you, and, and that's basically because WSP Builder will sign your project for you. When you want to, to deploy uh, a DLL or an assembly to the global assembly cache, the GAC, uh, you need to, to actually sign the assembly to, to ensure that it's uh, it's not modified or um, so it's just a security thing here. But uh, WS, the, the process of doing this may, can be a bit uh, tedious because you have to go to the project properties and then you have to go to the to the um, uh, signing uh, to set up the signing here. I'll uh, show you that in a moment. Uh, and you'll basically have to create, and you can go here and you go up to sign signing. As you can see, it's already been signed for us. If you want to do this manually, you have to go in and you choose a new, new um, uh, to create a new key, and you have to create a key file name, and you can add a password to it, and then you'll, you'll sign it. So, so basically, WSP will, will, will save you that time when you create a new solution here. Uh, now, the second thing that I want to show you that will really, really save you time is the, the context menu options for WSP Builder. If you right-click, you also have access to these uh, tools from the, w, from the tools menu here. Uh, but if you right-click on the, on the project properties here, you'll see that you have uh, a special menu here called WSP Builder. And if you've gone through the exercises of of the Understanding SharePoint Journal issue. Uh, you know that the creating a WSP file, that's really a tedious process because you have to create a manifest file and you have to add all the files manually there. And then you have to create a DDF file, which, was, which will be used by the make cab utility. And you have to sort of go through all these hoops and, and run a lot of command line options or command line commands to, to create your WSP. And of course, uh, WSP Builder will, will automate this completely for you. So you basically just hit Build WSP, and it'll go through and it'll just create everything for you. So you don't need to think about everything at all. 
Um, so uh, the second thing, I actually get an error here, but I'm, I'm going to ignore that now for this demonstration. Uh, the second thing that uh, you can do here that is that once you have uh, added or built the WSP, you can easily deploy, or actually we can't deploy it now probably because of the, the error here. Uh, we'll have to install the cab lib here. So I'll just go do that and I'll be back. In fact, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how to fix this problem because uh, I'm running this on the 32-bit system and, and uh, the, the default installation for for uh, WSP Builder seems to be um, the 64-bit edition. So what I'm doing here is I'm going into my C drive and into my program files and then I'll go to the WSP tools here and the WSP Builder extensions and then I'll go to resources. As you can see here, you have two folders and both of them contain a file called Cablib and that's that's one that couldn't be loaded here because I'm, as I said, I'm running this on a 32-bit um, uh, system. So I'm basically just going to copy this now and then I'm going back to the WSP Builder root and you can, as you can see, there's already a Cablib file here so I'm just going to overwrite that now by pasting it in here. We can see now if we can actually go back into WSP Builder or into Visual Studio here and we can build uh, WSP and as you can see now it's it's actually done. So it's so, th so that's basically the, the the process that you'll use. And once you once you have uh, created the um, the uh, WSP, you also get a few more options here on the WSP Builder menu. The, the first couple of ones are actually uh, to deploy the solution. Now, if you've, uh, again, if you walk through the exercises in the, in the issue, you'll know that this is also sort of a tedious process because you have to still rely on the STS admin uh, command line tool. And, and uh, then you have to go into the central administration, you have to deploy everything and, and, and sort of it, it's a tedious process when you want to, to just uh, develop something and test something on your lab environment. So uh, WSP Builder will allow us to, to basically just deploy everything by, by a simple mouse click here. You also have a few other options here. For instance, if you have uh, information in the 12 hive that you want to just copy to the 12 hive without actually having to, to uh, install and, uh, and um, redeploy the, the solution, you can, you can just add any file here, and as you can see, you can copy everything to the 12 hive, uh, that, and that will just make sure that everything is, is updated there. Uh, and uh, the other option is here, you can, which will also save you a lot of time, or especially if you're developing uh, .NET code, is to attach, attach directly to the IIS worker process. Uh, when you when you want to, to, to debug your code, uh, you need to attach to the W W three W P process, the worker process, and you'll you'll do that by going to the the debugging here, and you'll say attach to process, and then you'll you'll browse to your W three P process, and you'll have to figure out which one, or you have to connect to both of them, uh, and, and of course, as I said, W S P will will make this a lot easier for you by just saying attach to the I S worker process, and then you can actually start uh, developing and just stepping through your code, so that's that will really save you a lot of time here. So the final thing I want to show you here, uh, and again, this is also one of those uh, immense time savers. Uh, when you want to add new features to your project, you can now go to the add new item for, uh, from your project. And then you'll see that uh, in the in the dialog box here, you also have an item here called WSP Builder. And you can see a lot of the, the common features of uh, SharePoint development installed as as um, items for you to install. So if you want to say you want to create a, a web part here, uh, you can just say I want a web part feature, or if you want to add an event handler, or if you want to add a custom field type, the, well, the custom field type is it's sort of a, a tricky thing, but uh, you can basically get most of the work done for you. Or a feature with a receiver, you can just add these, and then and, and you'll set the scope, and you'll set the description and the name for everything. You'll hit OK, and as you can see now, all uh, the, the WSP Builder extensions will basically create the outline of the feature for you. Uh, you can see that you now have the template and the features folder mapped into your Visual Studio project, and you have the folder here, and you get the elements file added for you, and also get the feature created for you. So you don't need to create all these GUIDs and, and make sure that you get all the, the, the correct attributes here set correctly. And of course, since WSP Builder will sign the project for you, it'll also uh, create a strong name for you, uh, which can also be a tedious process. As I said, you, you need to either use external tools or at least go to the command line to actually get these tools. Uh, and and so so this is basically the, the, the WSP Builder will save you tons of time and just by doing this for you. 
So uh, with that said, uh, I'm just going to uh, end this by saying that if you want to know more about the uh, beginning SharePoint development issue, which we'll uh, release um, uh, soon, uh, you should go to the Understanding SharePoint Journal website, uh, and I'll put the address up on the screen now so you can see that. And you should sign up for the mailing list, of course, because that's uh, that's where the information or, or when the issue will uh, release, you'll, you'll get the information there. So uh, thank you for now, and I hope to see you again soon.